Hey, how are you? This is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman of the Jewish Executive Learning Network and BregmanSuccess.com. It is Thursday. That means Shabbos is almost upon us and it is time to learn up this week's Torah portion, this week's Parsha. This week's Parsha, this week's Torah portion is called Parsha's Vayakel. Some people in my office were unable to pronounce that word today, even though they're nice Jewish uh, people, but it's a you know who you are. It's a little bit of a tough one to pronounce. Uh, this week's parasha, I'm going to share with you another cool insight from your weekly product placement. Short and sweet on the parasha, my commentary on the weekly Torah portion. Distributed worldwide by Feldheim. If you want a copy, message me. We could do it. I'm going to share with you an insight in this week's Torah portion from page 229 and 230. I'm going to give you my plain English version if you want the actual multiple primary sources that support what I'm saying, you got to pick up a copy or maybe message me and I'll give you the rest of the sources for it. Okay, so here we go. In this week's Torah portion, we're in the book of Exodus, Sefer Shmois, chapter 35, verses 20 and 21. So for those of you who like to follow uh, by looking it up in your own copy of the Torah in English or Hebrew, pause the video and go find it there. Okay, ready? Can I go? Press play. Okay, here we go. So... The verses say this, that it says like this. Now pay close attention because I'm not going to have time to put the captions after because it's Thursday. we got to roll, okay? It says the entire assembly, keywords, of the children of Israel, that means the Jewish people, left from before Moshe. And then the next verse says every man whose heart inspired him came. Okay, so the entire assembly of children of Israel left from before Moshe. They were with Moses. They got some instructions dealing with the building of the Mishkan, the portable temple in the wilderness. Then it says, every man whose heart inspired him came. So I start writing here and I explain that there is a subtle imbalance to the verses. It starts out by saying the entire assembly. Emphasis added is mine, but it's accurate. The entire assembly and the children of Israel, they left from before Moses. Like they were all there. And then it says, every man, every ish, every individual whose purse, whose heart inspired him to give a contribution for the building of the Mishkan, that person came. So what you see over here is that the crowd seemingly had shrunk in size. Everybody got this uh, instruction, but uh, it was every ish, you know, every individual person was the one who, who came. Every, every yachid, every individual. So what is this about and why did the crowd shrink? So there's a classic commentary, Torah commentary from the last few hundred years called the Chida. The Chida. The Chida, if you write in English, it looks like Chida. But it's not how you say it. C-H-I-D-A. The Chida gives an answer that speaks to what I call here in poetic form, a truism of communal life. I like how I wrote that. Must have been, was that a lot of coffees that morning when I wrote that, okay? He says that everybody was excited when they heard from Moshe, from Moses, to open up their checkbooks and donate to the worthy cause of the building of the portable temple, the Mishkan. In English, they call it the tabernacle, right? They were all excited, but what happened? They were all excited when they heard it. The in the insp and, and the initial inspiration was felt by the entire assembly, the beginning of the verse. But when it came time to cough up the dough, you know what happens, right? The crowd shrunk a little bit. And instead, it was those unique individuals, says the Chida, what the verse calls every man who was able to effectively translate that excitement and inspiration and turn it into tangible action and give. So what am I talking about over here in plain English, okay? What well, you see over here, something a time and again that I speak about all the time. A lot of people get excited. A lot of people get inspired. A lot of people feel inspiration. And then they get lazy or they don't follow through. How many times have I spoken about that? Honestly, sometimes I begin to feel like I got one video. It's called Get Stuff Done. Hustle. Produce. Turn your inspiration into action. Do, Okay. And eventually, you might begin to be like, you know, this Rabbi Bregman's guy, he's got like one theme, one video, but he just keeps giving different sources on it. But it's true. Okay, I'm excited. I'm going to reshift back in my desk chair over here, okay? But I'm not trying to beat on just one theme. It's called, that is the theme, okay? If you're a human being and you want to get stuff done, you want to get some success, you want some accomplishments in your life, you want something to be written on your tombstone other than, uh, you know, uh, 
a, a day you came into the world and a day you left. I mean, you got to do something. You got to do it. And a lot of people, the entire assembly in many spheres of life, they hear, they get excited. But how many are going to go do it? It's Yechidim, it's individuals, it's this person, that person, that guy, her, and the rest, yeah, they heard, they even give you a like, a thumbs up, Facebook made a switch, you might get a smiley face, a <gasps> sign, a tear, a little heart, who knows what you're going to get, right? But who's going to do? That's the question. Give you one more source, because I'm excited, I want to go a little bit deeper, tell you something else that I bring over here in short and sweet on the Parsha, I'm not a comfortable chair right now, I give my best chair in the office to a co-worker, and so the coworker over here is out of camera and rocking my comfortable chair and I'm just in this one. But that's okay, because that's the kind of boss I am, right? Okay, I got the thumbs up. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper. It says in Halacha, in the Code of Jewish Law, an interesting Halacha, okay? Got a little under armor for you. I'm ready to go. Let's go, come on. It says in the Code of Jewish Law that when it comes time to Birkat HaMazon, Birkat HaMazon, the blessing after... You eat a bread meal, Baruch Hashem. It even has a tune, Birkat HaMazon. That's as far as I'm going, because I don't want you to unsubscribe from my videos, right? It says over there that when you do Birkat HaMazon, it says in the Code of Jewish Law and different Jewish legal halachic sources that there's a, a positive thing you're supposed to do. You're supposed to take the knife. If there's still a knife on the table, you're supposed to cover it. Maybe with a tissue. I don't have props over here. That just a box of tissues from Costco's on my desk. You know, you can cover it with a, a tissue, a cloth, a napkin, something. You cover it. Now, why do we do that? So there's different reasons brought in the halachic works. I bring different sources over there in short and sweet on the Parsha. Right? I bring different sources for you. <laughs> you <laughs> I'm on a roll over here, right? Okay, but you bring different sources. But I'll tell you one connected to the Devar Torah, the Torah thought I was saying a few minutes ago. And that is this. It says that in some of the sources that there was once upon a time a Jew who lived in ancient in ancient times. And when he got to the part in the Birkat HaMazon prayer after the bread, when we say, And that's as much as I'm going to do. That's a part we say, ask God, hey, please rebuild Jerusalem. That it should exist like it did in the times of the Holy Temple. This Yid, this Jew got so upset. He goes, Ay, there was a churban, a destruction of the Holy Temple. There's no base on Mikdash. You know what he said? He felt so upset. He took the knife that was on the table and stabbed himself. He was so upset when he got to that part in Birkat HaMazon. So since that time on, some halachic works say that's the source of the practice to cover your knife in Birkat HaMazon. Okay. So Ad Khan, which means like up to there in Hebrew, Ad Khan, that's the code of Jewish law, some explanation for that custom. So some of the contemporary commentaries, like Rav Chatzka Levenstein Zatzal, they ask a good question. They say, wait a minute, I don't understand. If a person could be so upset about the destruction of Jerusalem, of Jerusalem, that he could literally kill himself, pick up a knife and, and jab himself, I don't understand. You got a tissue, a cloth or something that's resting over it. That's going to stop them. You understand? If a person is so worked up that they're willing to take their own life, yeah? They're not going to blow the tissue or the cloth aside and take the knife and do it. What's pshat? What's pshat means like, uh, what's the what's explanation of that, right? It's a good question. So said Rav Chatzka Levenstein, a very interesting answer. He said like this. He said, you know what? He says, you got to understand human nature. A person could be so, Yiddish would say, Arayin Gaton, he's so worked up, he's so, eh, all about, it. I'm going to do, I'm going to make, I'm going to do, I feel, ah, I can't handle it. You ask him to lift a finger to do something about it in furtherance of how he states how he feels, maybe even to move a little cloth. Eh, the whole thing's not Negea already. The whole thing's not relevant to me anymore. I'm not interested it's a powerful Dvar Tyra. You realize that? All kinds of people say, I'm going to come and I'm going to go. I'm going to do. I'm going to feel. We should make. We should organize. You know what we should do? Eh. You know what? You don't have as much competition in life as you think you do because most people will be so moved when they are moved. A lot of people don't even get moved. But people who get moved, they'll say, I'm gonna do and you know what? You know what they're going to do in the end? Jack squat. They're not going to do anything about it. Think about it. Don't be one of those people. What did I call this Devar Torah in the book anyway? I mean, this is what short and sweet is like. I'm just telling you. Mine is my voice, but you can you can project. If you buy a copy, you can imagine me talking. Oh, it's called Too Lazy to Follow Through. How you like that, okay? A little close up. Too Lazy to Follow Through. Anyway, 
is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman of the Jewish Executive Learning Network and BregmanSuccess.com. Hope you enjoyed your Devar Taira on this week's Parsha. If you'd like to order a copy of Short and Sweet on the Parsha, you can connect with me directly um, at Shlomo at BregmanSuccess.com. You can try to get it from Amazon. Um, and either way, I'm going to connect over here in the black to my Facebook page. Connect with me over there. Like, you know, let's do. Let's grow. Let's learn tighter. Let's be inspired. And let's win. Life's more fun like that. Have a good Shabbos. Bye.